Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, something called sequences. Sequences are not really that difficult, but um, there's some patterns and stuff that are necessary to be able to identify. That technically would probably be the hardest part of sequences um, and then later series. But first, a sequence is basically a list of numbers um, that follow a pattern typically. They don't always have to follow a pattern, but you'll see a lot more that follow patterns. And we can then represent that sequence as a um, formula. Well, for example, um, so let's just represent the general term for sequences. So let's say a1, a2, a3, a4, a n. Okay? Now, this is a list of numbers where each of these represents a number, and that list of numbers represents a sequence. So this is an example of a sequence in general. The first number in the sequence is basically the first term of the sequence. The second number in the sequence is the second term. The third number in the sequence is the third term and so on and so forth, the fourth number. So this would be considered the nth term. Okay, so um, these little subscripts are representing my term number. Okay, so if I see a1, I'm thinking first term, a2, second term, a3, third term, a4, fourth term, a5, fifth term, a n, the nth term. This is a general representation of a term number. So this is an example of a sequence. Now, before I do that. So let me look at um, actual sequence with a pattern. So let's do, for example, 2, 4, 6, 8. Now, two things that can happen, right? A sequence can be uh, a limited sequence or an infinite sequence. Now notice that this sequence ends, right? at this term, the nth term. So we say that this is a finite sequence. Okay, this is a finite sequence. But notice that when I wrote this sequence here, I said dot, dot, dot. Technically that means that the sequence is going to continue forever. It's just, I'm not gonna write every single term because it's gonna take me forever. So this is an example of an infinite sequence. And you can have either a finite or infinite sequence. Now, sometimes we have an infinite sequence, but we only discuss the first, you know, whatever amount of terms. So in this case, let's say I only want to discuss the first four terms. So I take a piece of the infinite sequence. It just depends on what we want to do. But notice that this sequence, um, this particular sequence, has a pattern. You know, from this term to this term, I added two. From this term to this term, I added two. From this term to this term, I added two. There's a name for this type of sequence. I'll talk about it. I'll discuss it later. It's called an arithmetic sequence. Um, adding the same number to each term to get to the next one, which means that I can represent it with a pattern, with an equation, with a formula. I'm not going to get into that right now, only because we're only talking about the basics of sequences first. Then we'll get into the details. But if I want to ask, you know, what is A1? Meaning, what is the first term in this sequence? Remember, the term number, right? I'm going to say term number on top. Term number. This is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, blah, blah, blah. And it keeps going on forever. Don't confuse this with the actual value in the sequence. This is the term number. Term number. Okay? So... When I say A1, that means what is the first term? Well, in this case, the first term is 2. What is the second term? The second term is 4. What is the third term? The third term is, is 6, and so on and so forth. Now, this is an infinite sequence, so I'm not going to keep going, but um, sometimes what does help, though, is to write the term number on top of the actual or on bottom of the actual sequence and that helps you allow to see you know what kind of pattern um, is created so sometimes we represent the formula that represents a sequence we call it in explicit form and this is an example of a sequence um, 
the formula of a sequence in explicit form. Because what I can do is I can directly plug in the term number that I want. What that means is, for example, if I want the first term, then I just replace n with 1. And then everywhere I see n, I replace it with 1 and simplify. Therefore, I could just directly plug in the term number that I want. So this is negative 1 over um, 2 minus 1, which is 1, or negative 1. So the first term in this you know, sequence represented by this formula in explicit form is negative 1. So sometimes what I like to do is, as I find the terms, let's say I want the first five terms, I'll write it, I'll write it down here. So the first term is negative 1. Sometimes you're asked to, to, to write the first six terms um, of, uh, write the first six terms of the following sequence that represent, or is represented by this formula. So the first term is negative 1. Um, the second term, very simple, right? Second term, to find the second term, all I have to do is replace n with 2. Everywhere I see an n, I replace it with 2, and then I simplify. So this is a positive 1 over 4 minus 1, or 3. So the second term is 1 third. Okay, and then I can keep going on if I want to. Um, I'm not going to keep going on for now. So sometimes you're asked to just find the first five terms of the sequence and then, you know, represent the sequence. So this would be the first two terms of the sequence and then technically dot, dot, dot. It continues from there. Um, but I want to talk about the form, right? So this is called the explicit form of this sequence. This is the formula that represents the sequence, but it's an explicit form. I could directly plug in the term number that I want. So if I want, you know, the hundredth term, let's say I want the hundredth term. I could find that right now, hundredth term. All I have to do is replace n with 100, right? 100. Everywhere I see an n, replace it with 100. So I have positive 1 over 200 minus 1, 199. So the 100th term is 1 over 199. So, um, but this is only one representation of a formula that represents a sequence. Um, I want to show this as well. This is called the recursive form of a formula of a sequence. This is my recursive form. Why is it re recursive? Um, if you notice, recursive form. It says the nth term is equal to 3 times the n minus 1th term plus 4. This means that I need a term prior to find the term that I want. If that makes sense, I'll show you what I mean. So for example, um, usually you're given the first term in a recursive form, or, you know, or one of the terms. So let's say the first term is 2, and I want to find the second term. So what do I do? Same thing I did before, I'm replacing n with 2, but notice what happens when I replace n with 2. Okay, notice that n minus 1 is 1, so this is a1 plus 4. So I have, when I replace n with 2, I get 3 times a1 plus 4. This means that I need the first term to get to the second term. So I need a previous term to get to the term that I want. So I need to know what a1 is to get to a2. And I have a1 here, so I'm going to replace it with 2. And then simplify. So 6 plus 4 is 10. Let me do that again. Let me do the third term. Okay, so here's the third term a3. Replace all of my n's with 3. Right? This is a subscript. Don't, you know, be very careful how you write it. So this says 3 times a2 plus 4. Well, a2 represents the second term. So now I replace a2 with the second term, but that means I need a2, or the second term, to get to the third term. And I just determined that the second term was 10. So I can replace a2 with 10 to find a3. 30 plus 4, so 34. Okay, this is a recursive form. I need a prior term, a previous term, or sometimes two terms ahead 
to find the term that I want. So one more. A4 is 3 times A4 minus 1 plus 4. Simplify. A4 is 3 times A3 plus 4. So this means that I need the third term to get to the fourth term. And I just determined that the third term was 34. Right? Again, I need a previous term to get to the term that I want. Okay, 34 times 3 plus 4, 106. So if I'm listing the terms in this sequence represented by this recursive formula, it starts with a 2, then the second term is a 10, the third term is a 34, the fourth term is 106, and then so on and so forth. Now, the thing about recursive formulas is that if I want the 100th term, I'm going to need the 99th term. So, you know, in the situation that I'm in right now, I'd have to go to the 99th term to get to the 100th term, unless I'm given the 99th term. So that's the unfortunate part of the recursive form of um, a sequence. So, all right. So let me just do a couple of um, more examples. Find, so we're going to just find the first five terms. Find, let me just say the first four terms of each sequence, okay? So this sequence is represented explicitly. Um, I'll do it in yellow. So a1 is 3 times 1 plus 1 minus 7. Replace 1 with um, n. Replace n with 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 7 is negative 1. The second term, 3 times 2 plus 1 minus 7. 2 plus 1 is 3. Times 3 is 9. Minus 7 is 2. a3, the third term, is 3 times 3 plus 1 minus 7. 3 plus 1 is 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 7 is 5. 8, 4. 3 times 4 plus 1 minus 7. 5 times 3 is 15 minus 7 is 8. So I have the following first four terms of the C. So this sequence is, follows the uh, pattern negative 1, 2, 5, 8, and then it will continue from there. So these are the first four terms of this particular sequence represented in explicit form. The reason I chose this one um, was because I'm not sure if anybody has seen factorial before. And let me discuss that really quickly. Um, if I say factorial, so n factorial. This is the product of each term from n descending by 1 down to 1. So that means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 all the way down to 1. So what does that mean? If I want 4 factorial, this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If I want 5 factorial, this is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If I want 10 factorial, this is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. These are all multiplication, okay? That's called factorial. So here, I have this uh, sequence represented explicitly, and I want to find the, you know, first four terms of the sequence. So let's do A1. A1 is 2 over 1 factorial, which is 2 over 1, 2. A2. The second term is 2 over 2 factorial, which is 2 over 2 times 1, or 2 over 2, which is 1. A3, 2 over 3 factorial, which is 2 over 3 times 2 times 1, or 2 over 6, or 1 over 3. A4, 2 over 4 factorial. 2 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1. So 2 over 24, or 1 over 12. And then the first four terms of this sequence are 2, 1, 1 third, 1 12th, and so on and so forth. Okay?